The 1919 Treaty of Versailles limited the German army to just 100,000 men, and the Germans were not allowed to have tanks or armored cars or airplanes. Even the general staff was disbanded. But none of that prevented the small German army of the 1920s from studying the lessons of the past, studying the technology of the present, and innovating for the future. And whereas the French were fixated on defensive warfare after World War I, the Germans very much remained with an offensive mindset. So the Germans were fixated on the offensive as they had been at the end of World War I using stormtrooper tactics, but now they wanted to marry stormtrooper tactics, which had been employed by German infantry in 1918. They wanted to marry that with the possibilities afforded by tanks and airplanes. General Hans von Siecht, uh, the chief of the, of the German army in the 1920s, said the whole future of warfare appears to me to lie in the employment of mobile armies, relatively small but of high quality and rendered distinctly more effective by the addition of aircraft. When Hitler came to power in 1933, he was very fascinated by the possibilities of airplanes and armor, which accorded with his fascist conception of, of technology. So by 1935, Germany had created its first three armored divisions, combining tanks and motorized infantry. Meanwhile, the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, focused on ground support. They weren't focused on strategic bombing or uh, or air-to-air -air combat. They were really focused on how to support German troops on the ground, and they figured out the most effective way to coordinate air and ground operations was with mobile two-way radios, a new technology that allowed far greater cohesion and flexibility on the battlefield. The result of the German innovations was very rapidly apparent in 1939 when it took the Germans only one month to march to Warsaw and defeat Poland. And then finally you had the German attack in the West which began on May 10, 1940 and ended on June 22 with Germany in possession of France and the Low Countries. The Battle of France is not one that Germany should have won. The Germans were outnumbered. In 1940, the Germans had 135 divisions. The Allies, the British, the French, the Dutch, and others, they had 152 divisions. The Germans had 2,400 tanks. The Allies had more than 4,200. The Germans had about 3,300 aircraft. The Allies had almost 5,000. And yet, the Germans decisively won the Battle of France, in part because of their audacious planning. They figured out how to bypass the Maginot Line by attacking through the Ardennes Forest, which the French had never imagined that the Germans could penetrate with their panzer divisions, but they did. They used the concept called Blitzkrieg, the term coined by Time Magazine. Combining the tanks, known as panzers, with their Stuka dive bombers very effectively. Even though most of the German troops moved on horse or foot, the key offensive punch was provided by these armored divisions backed by the Luftwaffe's Stuka dive bombers. Again, the British and French had plenty of tanks, but they did not use them effectively. They did not mobilize them to stop uh, the German onslaught. And so by May 20th, just 10 days after the battle began, the Germans had reached the English Channel. 
Marc Bloch, who was a French historian uh, who experienced uh, the fall of France and later died uh, in, in the Nazi occupation, wrote that this dropping of bombs from the sky has a unique power of spreading terror. It seems to crush the very air with unparalleled violence and conjures up pictures of torn flesh, which are only too horribly borne out by the sights one sees. So his quote suggests that there was an important psychological component to this German blitzkrieg because the Allies simply were not ready for this type of rapid warfare with the airplanes and the tanks appearing from seemingly nowhere. And it was the psychological shock as much of anything else uh, that led to the rapid collapse of French resistance. The Germans entered Paris on June 14, 1940. They had suffered only 150,000 casualties compared to the Allies who lost more than two million men. This was a very one-sided battle which left the Germans in possession of much of Western Europe. 